Welcome to Talent Development's video series. My name is Danny Jones. In this video, we are going to discuss several useful techniques for using a ruler-based safety compass. As you can see, there is a wide variety of ruler-based safety compasses, but their structures are basically the same. Each version here has small holes to insert the tip of a writing utensil at various points along a ruler, and a pivot wheel at one end. The compasses that allow for a continuum either use a small dial or friction to hold the slide in place. For slides with dials, the dial should be loosened before moving it along the continuum and then retightened. Otherwise, it's fairly easy to damage or destroy the dial and slide. For slides that only use friction, the students should be careful not to twist the compass or put too much pressure on the slide. If they do, the slide will become loose over time and will not stay in position. For our purposes, I will use this friction compass for my demonstrations. Because the student journal is difficult to keep completely flat, teachers may make photocopies of the page or have the students cut the page out of the consumable book. When using a ruler-based safety compass, it is important to have a level surface with no obstructions, so remove all impeding objects from your work area. For basic constructions, it's easiest to start with a clearly marked point, also called a center point. Then place the center of the wheel, which I call the pivot point, as accurately on the center point as possible. Often, it is difficult to hold the paper down while holding the pivot point at the same time. I have found that it is easier to create an arc by using one finger to hold the pivot point and using my palm to hold the paper. Now I use my other hand to describe an arc or a circle. With this technique, I can only draw a semicircle. If I need to draw a whole circle, I lift my palm while still holding the pivot point with my finger, then rotate the paper half of a turn. While holding the paper in place with my palm, I finish drawing the circle. If needed, I can draw back and forth to make sure everything connects. In Unit 3, students will have the opportunity to draw a design using the compass in Lesson 1, Discovery Activity 2. I'm going to demonstrate the five steps to create the design. The first step is to draw a circle with the compass. The second step is to create and strike an arc using the circle and the pivot point. Place the pivot point on the circle and strike an arc that starts on the circle and ends on another point of the circle. I've created my first interior arc with the same radius of the circle. The third step is to repeat step two, but this time I will place the pivot point on the intersection of the first arc in the circle. I will repeat this process four more times until the design is complete. As the final step, I will erase the original circle to reveal the geometric design. You can use a ruler-based compass to bisect a line segment. I will demonstrate how to draw arcs from both endpoints and find the bisector. First, place the compass's pivot point on one endpoint. Move the compass's slide well beyond the line segment's midpoint. I now strike an arc above and below the line segment. Being careful not to move the slide, strike arcs from the opposite endpoint. Using the straight edge, connect the arc's intersections. This new line segment bisects the original line segment, 
in addition to bisecting the original line segment, this new line segment is perpendicular to the original line segment. We call this segment a perpendicular bisector. Now, we are going to use a compass to create an equilateral triangle with all three sides equal in length to the original line segment. Place the pivot point on one end point of the line segment. Move the slide until a point on the slide is on the other end point. Strike an arc from that end point above the line segment. Now strike another arc from the other end point. It is important to remember not to change the compass's slide position. The point of intersection of the two arcs is equidistant from both this end point and this end point. By connecting this new point to both end points, I've created an equilateral triangle with all three sides the same length. For our final demonstration, I'm going to demonstrate how to use the compass to bisect an angle. We start by placing the pivot point on the angle's vertex. Now I will strike an arc that intersects both sides of the angle. I'll now reposition the pivot point on this intersection of the angle and the arc. I will now strike an arc in the interior of the angle. Now I'll place my pivot point on the opposite intersection and strike an arc inside the interior of the angle. Using the compass's straight edge, I will connect the intersection of the two arcs to the vertex. This new line segment I created bisects the original angle. This concludes using a ruler-based compass. We hope you found the information and demonstrations helpful. More information and exercises on compasses are available in Talent Development's Geometry Foundation's workbooks. Thank you for taking the time to view this video, and we welcome you to view other instructional videos in Talent Development's Geometry Foundation's video series.